We sometimes hear that people have lost their faith in intent. Why do you think this is? Uh, we hear that a lot as well. And one of the keys to demand base is our intent capability. I think where people have had difficulties in the past is, is often what we call a black box approach. I, I will point at an account and say, that's an account you should go after because our intent engine says so. And that's it. And you have to believe this magic. And I think that becomes very difficult if you pass a piece of intent to a, a salesperson who chases after it and it turns out that it's not right. They lose faith and therefore the sales and marketing alignment loses faith and then people say, don't bother giving me any more intent signals. And I, I fully understand that. An example, if you, uh, if you unsubscribe from an email, do you really think that's a buying signal? We don't. No. Anyway, um, that's for another day. But I think what's really important is the way demand-based view intent is you're the business, you tell us what buying signals are important, and we'll only surface those. But when we surface them, we'll tell you that organization is in market right now. The reason they're in market is because they read that particular article. They were searching these particular keywords that you've told us are relevant. Maybe they then came to the website and they engaged with sales. They replied to an email, whatever it is. But you've got that complete picture, not just of there is intent there, go after that customer, but why? And importantly, we also put on top of that where they are in your buyer journey, your buyer journey, not ours. And that's really important because we all spend time understanding if they're at that stage in the buyer journey, we want to give them that particular message, that piece of content, etc. If it's only at the first insight that they're showing around a buying signal, don't throw sales in there, give them brand awareness, etc. So I think it's really important that when we surface intent, you understand why we're giving you that intent where they are in the buyer journey, what messaging you as a sales and marketing team need to utilize. And so it takes it from that anonymous black box approach to saying, right, I can actually utilize this. I know it's really relevant and the messaging is therefore much stronger. And what is an underutilized way to use intent data with existing resources? That's a cool. There's a hundred ways you could answer that question. I think one thing that people seem to miss is the importance of intent with existing customers. And what I mean by that is I've got an account that's renewing in four months' time. I think we've got a really good relationship. Intent flags up that actually they're exploring the competition. They're looking at products that we also sell that maybe they don't know that we are offering. Therefore, there's, A, in that first example, the ability to go in there and rescue that account before it becomes an issue. Why are they talking to the competition? You're aware of that. So when you're having your talk tracks with them, you can be very relevant to things that you know you're better than the competition on. If there's a product that you offer that they've been searching for, make sure they know about it. So there's upsell opportunity. So I think intent is fantastic for um, you know finding new prospects, but it's also equally as, as successful, as I say, for customers. And do you think buyers overestimate or underestimate like how long it takes to implement and test intent technologies? Again, yeah, there are technologies out there that you you buy a predictive algorithm and then four months later it's in a position you can start using it. If you're investing a, a chunk of your budget in a technology to give you intent and you've got to wait four months to get any insight, that's really difficult. Um, we have our clients up and running in as little as 24 hours. If we've, if we've gone through the process of building out a profile for them, having a look at their website data as part of the pre-sales, which we often do, because if you're going to assess a, a technology and is it going to work for you, looking at your own data is much more powerful. The day they sign up is the day they start utilizing it. And I think that is really a bit of a game changer. The ability, if you've got intent, start using it on day one, not on month four. And can marketers, um, when choosing target accounts, just guess instead of using intent data? I think that's what a lot of people do. And that's great. And, and often sales will come to them and say, I'm in selling to retailers. These are the 200 retailers I want you to go after. Fantastic. And that makes a lot of sense. But if 100 of those retailers aren't in market for the next year, but there's 40 others that aren't on that list that are in market right now, that's really valuable information. You only get that from an intent engine. So again, one of the things we do as a business is we'll take uh, an understanding of the firmographics, the type of businesses, sizes, regions, et cetera, that you're interested in, those buying signals, but we'll also take your target list or your customer list and we'll build it all in there. And so we'll be able to give you deep insight on those particular organizations that are on that list, if they're someone you should prioritize, if so, why? 
but also we'll look at others like them. So we'll come back with recommendations. Well, maybe those 40, put them on the back burner in a nurture campaign for now because there's these 40 here that really are in market and then you can change that around. So yeah, it, take the guesswork out of, of your strategies is something we would certainly recommend. And what industries or size of companies does intent data work best for? Again, it really depends. All industries have their own um, firmographics or target accounts that they go after. And we find working with startups through to, you know, multinational organizations, um, we have an effective capability. If it's if you're selling widgets to companies at £10 a time, probably an intent engine isn't the right way to go because what we're trying to do is identify where you should focus your efforts. And if you're selling millions and millions and millions of products to millions of people, having an intent engine probably doesn't make sense. But if you're, let's say you're a startup and what you're trying to do is you've got this fantastic technology for the banking sector. Banks never heard of you, but you want to try and get your name out there. The traditional Google ads, throwing ads here and everywhere to try and raise your brand awareness is great, but the majority of people you'll reach won't be banks and if you're a startup you haven't got a lot of money to to throw away like that whereas if you take the demand-based approach which is saying i'm only going to focus on banks and only those banks that right now are showing relevant buying signals that mean they're interested in my technology you've got a very focused campaign very focused budget and then you're just making sure that you're aiming for those organizations how can businesses use intent data to expand into new territories and markets uh, that, that is a really good use case. So let's say I've been selling in Europe for three years. I want to go into the US market. I sell into retail, for instance. There are so many retailers in the States, I could blow my budget very quickly. And I could have a sales team going out there and hammering the phones and not getting anywhere because there's too many accounts. So intent is the perfect way to say, right, I've only got three salespeople in the States. I've only got this limited budget. I want to make sure every penny, every bit of resource, all the time I'm spending is focused in the right areas. So I'm going to look at retailers who fit my my design that are at the moment showing these buying signals because then I've got much more likelihood of putting them into the pipeline and then being closed faster rather than the sporadic spray and pray approach. 